Kevin Kruger is also from Idaho and is going to talk to us uh, next. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Kevin Kruger, and I'm a research support scientist for the University of Idaho. Uh, this project was uh, done with the USDA ARS at Kimberly, Idaho, that we have in southern Idaho in collaboration with the University of Idaho. And today I'm presenting assessment of physical properties for cover crop and, uh, and manure applied soils in Idaho's Magic Valley. I'll talk about what our purpose was, what, did, what we did, and what we found. So what is the purpose? So uh, the Magic Valley resides where that star is, basically. Um, the Snake River uh, comes in from east to west. And basically, without this river, we have no crops. We irrigate our soils. Um, and that's what we do. If we didn't, it's a very dry and desolate sort of area. <laughs> unfortunately, we do apply manure. Well, not unfortunately, but we do apply manure as well. So um, in the river, we have high phosphorus and high nitrate concentrations, as well as sediment loading. An example of this would be in uh, Rock Creek. Rock Creek's a small little river that kind of passes through um, Twin Falls. It comes right off of the Snake River. And this is a DEQ graph taken over a five-year period. And uh, it's a uh, TMDL. Um, for total phosphorus. And as you can see, we've exceeded the limit of 0 0.1 milligrams per liter quite a few times um, over the five year period of measuring. So we do have some problems with phosphorus. So in Southern Idaho, unfortunately, our soils are prone to crusting. We have a low organic matter between two and 3%. And we have high calcium carbonates which means we have a caliche zone and it makes things very fun. So the main goal was to identify management practices that enhance soil health physical properties in the Magic Valley. So what did we do? Uh, we used two ARS sites, a cover crop study established in 2016 and a long-term manure study established in 2013. We looked at the physical properties of bulk density, infiltration, including runoff rate and rainfall before runoff, which is basically the water holding capacity of the soil. And we looked at three different methods of assessing soil aggregate stability. The wet sieving method, which is more of the standard method that's used. Um, the CSI method, which is the Cornell uh, sprinkler infiltrometer method, which I refer to as the stand test, and you'll, you'll soon see why and the slate test. So our first cover, our first site is a cover crop site. It's a, in a split plot design. There's four replications and four treatments, um, cover crop only, manure only, cover crop and manure and a control. The tillage was strip till and conventional till. We used uh, solid dairy manure, dry solid dairy manure at 30 tons per acre. And our cash crops were silage corn and our cover crop, winter cover crop was triticale. For the second site, it was a randomized complete block design, four replicates, eight treatments of 10, 20, and 30 ton per acre, biannually and annually, along with a fertilizer treatment and a control treatment where we didn't put any soil amendments on at all. The tillage was disc and moldboard plowed, and um, we put solid dairy manure on dry solid dairy manure, and the crops were sugar beets. So for our infiltration test, this is the Cornell system, we put 10 inches of water on to force runoff. When we did this, basically we know what the constant head is, we know, um, and we know how much the runoff is, so basically we can just subtract that from the amount of water that we're putting on and we can determine a runoff rate. The rainfall before runoff is basically we would time how much water, how many inches of water, would be placed onto the soil before you started seeing runoff. So whether it was two inches, one inches, we measured that. So here is infiltration through poorly structured soil. As you can see here, it's monkey. So I put 10 inches of water on this and it's muddy. When I pulled uh, everything apart, I basically had a big old thing of water on top 
and it just flooded right out. So there's no structure. Um, there's really nothing holding this soil together. So this is an example of infiltration through a well-structured soil. You have plant life. You can tell the organic matter is high because of the color. It actually had around 7%. This example isn't actually at the site um, that, uh, that we were conducting the research on, but uh, it does prove that we can use um, a cover crop-like structure in Idaho. So for aggregate stability, we use this wet sieving method. Um, we use nested sieves at four millimeter, two millimeter, a quarter of a millimeter, and 0 .5, 0 0.053 millimeters. And basically what happens is um, the sieves oscillate up and down inside the buckets. So um, we put 100 grams in, and then basically as the, as the sieves go up and down, you see that oscillation and the soil will be distributed through and then goes out, um, out the bucket, the smaller material does. Here, we use a Cornell sprinkler infiltrometer um, to sprinkle down um, water in a sort of rain, sort of showing a rain event. So we have pivots, um, a MISA and a LISA system. The MISA system is more the conventional type. The nozzles sit about anywhere between three and five foot in the air. The LISA system sits a, about a foot from the air. So you get less, um, the, when the rain hits the soil, um, it destroys it less. That's sort of the theory behind it. And then the last is the slake test. So this is basically an app that was put together um, to sort of use the camera function um, on your phone to look at the degradation of soil. And um, I ended up having to cut this particular set from the, uh, from the presentation, but we didn't see any significant differences with this particular method. So we'll only focus on wet sieve in the Cornell system. So just to show an example of the wet sieve system working, we put hundred grams of soil in the top of this. And then basically as it oscillates up and down at 30 oscillations per minute um, at 1.5 inches, the soil um, separates to the bottom. And then this is an example of the Cornell sprinkler system working. So this is situated at a foot. Um, so there's not much degradation of the soil um, as it you know, rains on top of it. I didn't actually do it exactly like this. We actually sieved the soil through eight millimeter sieves. And then we put 25 grams of soil in each of these. Um, and then measured the weight after that. But when I was first figuring out how to do this, I just put individual aggregates in to see what the results would look like. So what did we find? So this is cover crop bulk density, basically, uh, let's see, at zero to two inches and two to four inches. And we did find significant differences between the control and the manure only application and the cover crop and manure application. So for bulk density, a smaller number is better because you get um, basically a smaller number, you'll have more pore size, so you'll have more area for the water um, to sort of go, and you'll have more area for the roots to, to get down there as well. Um, we, we didn't actually see any significant differences um, at two to four inches or no, we did, sorry. We did see significant differences, but we could not tell from where the significant differences were coming from. So for infiltration runoff rate, we did not see any significant differences, but for water holding capacity, we did. We did see significant differences, um, but we could not indicate from where. We, we know that the cover crop plus manure um, we saw uh, better significant differences, but not from you know, manure only or cover crop only. So, so for soil aggregates, we did not see any significant differences with the wet saving. And MWD uh, is uh, an index that we use to um, identify whether or not um, a soil is stable or not. Um, a bigger number is better, basically a mean weight diameter. 
So when the number is bigger, you have a bigger aggregate, which indicates that, um, that you have a better soil aggregate stability. So when we did the stand test, um, we found significant differences at the one foot marker, but we couldn't really identify what, you know, what significant differences that we had. We didn't see any significant difference at three or five, and we actually see that at five foot, the, um, the, uh, the uh, MWD is much lower. So as it was raining down at the higher, um, at the higher height, it was basically breaking up the soil even more. So we did not see any significant differences with tillage among soil aggregates. We did see some uh, with bulk density. So this is a long-term study uh, with manure. We did see some significant differences between the 30 tons per acre um, and the, uh, annually and the uh, 10 and uh, uh, or 10 annually and biannually. Basically, with bulk density smaller is better. For the long-term study, we did not see any significant differences for runoff rate, and we also didn't see any significant differences with rainfall before runoff either. With uh, soil aggregates, we, we, didn't see, we also didn't see any significant differences between the wet sieving method or the stand test with all the different types of, uh, with all the different types of treatments. We just, we didn't see anything. So conclusions. Although aggregate stability increased when cover crops and manure were applied, there were no significant differences for the wet sieving or the slate test. Manure application rates of 10, 20, and 30 did not improve the runoff rate or soil aggregate stability in the long-term study. Cover crops and manure increased aggregates, uh, aggregate stability when irrigation was applied at one foot over the soil surface. Irrigating above the soil surface potentially destroys any structure in the cover crop study. And bulk density was significantly different in the first four inches of soil for the cover crop study and the long-term study. And reduced tillage did not significantly improve aggregate stability in the cover crop study. And that's it. Are there any questions? <laughs> Kevin, I was going to ask, what other methods are out there commonly used to measure soil health? You showed uh, three instruments that you used for uh, water percolation and, and aggregate stability and things like that. Is there anything else people commonly use for those types of tests? Yes. So you can use, uh, you can look at compaction. So we have a penetrometer. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You have a penetrometer that you can use to basically push into the soil and it measures basically the PSI. So as you push it further into the soil, you can see where your compaction zones are. You can also look at microbial growth in the soil. Um, there was a poster uh, out, out there <laughs> that looked at uh, putting underwear in the soil. And so you can look at how microbes sort of eat the cotton of the underwear. That's one indicator. Another indicator is earthworms. So if you, you go out into your field and you dig a hole, if you can find earthworms in that field, um, that's another indicator of, of good soil health. Um, the, there's several and we're, we're developing them as time go by. We're, we're actually looking at active carbon in soil as well. Um, and that's sort of maybe a cheaper method to the Haney test. So we're, we're actually in the process of developing a active carbon index. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of any more. <laughs>